Hi, it's Paul. Uh, Gemma. <laughs> Slightly late from Hedge Herbivore. Um, welcome to our Your Assumptions About Us video. First of all, some great news. Tell him. Are the cookbooks out? Woo! Well, for pre-order for a few days and then it'll be out, out. 10% off if you order it now. Link below, where's my hand got to be? Here. Down there somewhere. Link below. Very, Why should they get it? Very exciting. Well, <laughs> been working on it for months. It's Blooming brilliant. It's basically all healthy whole plant foods. There's no sugars like oils, you know, eggs, dairy, any yeah. processed Nothing out of a chicken's stuff. bum. Yeah, it's all healthy ingredients, but no really tea, milk. very decadent, healthy, um, tasty desserts. Virtuous vegan desserts that taste really naughty and they really do. You'll love it, guys, honestly. So uh, give that a look and uh, right. On to the assumptions. Assumptions. Caroline Jones, love you guys. Well, I'm you uh. kind. Okay, here's my assumption. You are never going to get married. No, Jesuit just looks like you needed some assumptions to work with. <laughs> That's very true. We're never going to get married. What would you say to that? <laughs> We've been, have been engaged for quite a few years, so that's like a fair comment. Yeah, it's been a bit slow. Yeah, I mean, with COVID, it's not really a great time. You can only have a certain amount of people at a wedding, that kind of thing. Um, if we go into lockdown, have you got to cancel everything and lose your money? Like, I don't know. Yeah. But we haven't prioritised saving we've, money. We've really just been plowing everything back into the business, but we're doing all right now, so uh, maybe yeah. we should get on with it. Yeah. What do you reckon? Yes. Deal. Oh, I thought we were going to high five. Well, I'm a bit more romantic than you. <laughs> like I'm gonna, the romantic one. Like I was going to slap your kiss away. smack me in the face. Right, I'll let you read one. I didn't mean it. Melanie Brown says, y'all are meant to be Aww. in a heart. That's very cute. My assumption is that you'll want to get married on a beach or forest area. We've sort of talked about it, haven't we? And we've said that like, yeah. maybe an animal sanctuary, like with a bit of a woods or something. Yeah, we're like not drinkers these days, so we wouldn't care about if it was in a posh venue with alcohol and all that jazz. So we thought if we get married at an animal sanctuary, will they get to have you know, a load of money from us, which could help them out. So that's an idea we've pondered upon. Yeah. We want to do uh, fancy dash stuff. And another thing I considered was Norwich <laughs> Castle. You can hire out one of the function rooms. Because I, I'd really love everyone to dress up in kind of like a medieval... I'd like to be a Spartan. You just a, want to be a Spartan. A red cape on and <laughs> kick people down holes and say, that's a Sparta. <laughs> it seems like a good thing to have at a wedding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Crystal Moe, you guys have been together for a long time. Do you guys have quirks that kind of annoy the other person? All oh, controversial. I guess everyone does, but you guys seem to get on so well, and not just for the camera. That's a fair comment. Oh, that's nice. Any quirks that you don't like of me? I know what um, you you what you get annoyed at that I never shut the door in the hallway. <laughs> They've got these doors that lead oh, to the cupboards. cupboards and there's one and he said you never shut the door there's always something sticking out the bottom oh, yeah. <laughs> it's either one or the other <laughs> i can't say it annoys me though <laughs> do you know what I mean? if that's the least of my worries <laughs> i mean the worst of my worries <laughs> yeah. yeah no i will say no quirks that annoy the other person i cannot think of anything i'm afraid are you being kind that's a bit of a boring answer but um feel free to say whatever well, I will dump you. You annoy me every day <laughs> with all these things you do. <laughs> I've honestly just never been so happy. Like I love uh, everything about uh, about you. So we're getting too mushy, too mushy now. I wouldn't but change her for the world. I love you too. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's your bro, is it, John? It's me, Daniel Flynn. Why did you quit the partying? Was it just for health reasons, or were there other reasons with partying? Other issues with partying? I mean, um, you know, we've talked about this at length in the past, and I, I was taking enough party drugs and performance enhancing drugs and drinking enough, you know, if, of a night out, or if I was working the door even, uh, mm -hmm. to kill a, a rhinoceros. And um, mm -hmm. it just occurred to me one day, I've got away with a hell of a lot, and um, I'm not going to keep getting away with it. It just dawned on me. I don't know if you saw Charlie Sheen's kind of breakdown where... Uh, he was really speaking with such, like he was a god almost, and he was indestructible, and that's exactly yeah. how I used to speak. I thought I was indestructible. And uh, one day I just woke up and thought, I need to change. Mm. Mm. For me, it was health, 100%. If it wasn't for my health declining, I don't know if I could have quit that lifestyle. So in a way, I'm glad that I had all those health problems, if I, mm. if I can really put it like that. I mean, the I'm not pain. glad, but... 
the pain of remaining in the same became greater than the pain of changing. Exactly that. Then yeah. that's often like for an not saying that we were addicts, although we probably were at some point. Yeah, I was um, an addict of alcohol for sure at one point. Yeah. Yeah, that's the only way out for a lot of people. It's, uh, it's a horrible disease addiction. Some people have to hit rock bottom before they'll change. And now I think don't let yourself have to get to that place, you know. But um, that's how it is for a lot of people, mm. isn't it? Yeah. And there were two people with a similar comment. Four babies, one arm. That's a strange uh, name. I assume that Paul wears the pants in the relationship. <laughs> but Nina Johnson says, oh, this should be fun. Gemma wears the pants in the relationship. Controversial, but... Your cat controls the house and you're helping me out. <laughs> That's uh, fair to say. Who wears the pants? If you get any tracks, you've heard them. <laughs> well, so have I. Does it come out? Um. <laughs> Who wears the trousers around here? I don't think either of us do. That would have been my answer. Yeah. I think we're 50 50 on it, um, pretty much everything. I mean, like, you take care of the finances, don't you? Yeah. Simply because I'm rubbish with money. Yeah. Um, you have more of the work responsibilities. Yeah, but um, yeah, I feel like in our relationship, in terms of what are we, are we going out? What are we going to do? Whatever. I think we, um, I don't know. I think we're very deeply in love with each other, and we both really care like about the other person's happiness, and we just come to mutual decisions about things. Is that fair to say? Agreed. I feel very lucky. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you'll go, mate. Eve Psych says. You still have all your early noughties party clothes hidden at the back of your wardrobe. Does that mean me or you or both of us? I'm going to say both. Well, I change size so much that I don't really keep clothes from one season to the next. (laughs) (laughs) So it's not me. Yeah, I still have some old uh, party clothes, but I never really want to go out partying anymore. And I wouldn't really wear them in the house. I don't really know why I have them. Yeah. Hmm. You were right. Ro07 dude, 1988. I assume you still rock the necklace on a weekly basis. <laughs> In that photo. <laughs> the the one that says sexy on it. Ah. Yeah. Two or three people commented on that necklace from that photo. You were obsessed with it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I would not wear that necklace now. I, I was quite cock sure of myself when you were I was cock of the walk quite cocky when I was a teenager my later teen years you certainly got my attention <laughs> <laughs> there's like a couple of year period there where I got into drinking and party drugs you know things and I was very really confident I mean it wasn't real confidence you know but yeah I'd go out in the shortest skirts and you know just not much on and I'd wear a necklace that says um, sexy on it and now I think oh, <laughs> why did I want to wear that <laughs> I do not still own that necklace no Vegan Lifting says, if I now could go back in time to you two in this picture and introduce you guys to veganism, how would you respond? Would you be interested or shrug it off and say bacon though or protein though? Protein though. <laughs> yeah, I could, I'd probably be a bacon though one in that photo at that time. Um, yeah, I was completely like, I was just unawakened. I didn't understand perspectives. I lived in my own bubble, my own world. I thought my perspective was the perspective and yeah, I wasn't very open-minded at that time, I'm afraid to say. Me neither. Well, I was just convinced that we need meat for protein, so what am I gonna do? Uh, Like most people, or a lot of people today. Hmm. uh, Krista Williams, neither of you want to have children. I think that's- uh, Correct. Fair to say, like for me, I'm on such a mission, like in terms of spreading veganism and also in terms of like total energy and wanting to train hard to be a good, you know, in good shape to to be an advocate for animals. Mm. And what's your things? Um, I just don't feel that urge to have children. I never have. Really? I've had little periods of it, you know, but they haven't lasted. I've thought, okay, if I have this like urge, it has to last a long time for me to feel sure that this is what I really want and it never has and I figure that if we change our minds I would prefer to adopt a child mm, yeah, um, than yeah. to have my own I think having my own would just be so um, painful and I have an autoimmune disease I wouldn't like to pass that on um, and I'm a little concerned about the, the planet and what's happening yeah you know in terms of uh, I'm a big bit concerned yeah, just the, the way the planet is uh, struggling, let's say, yeah. with us over the yeah, population. Yeah, scary. 
Yeah. You know, there'll be wars over water and stuff sooner or later, so um, mm. I don't really want to bring a kid into that, mm. uh, to be honest. Is it your turn or my turn? I think it's you. Uh, Fifty Shades of Compassion, our lovely IRL friend. Hmm, I think I assume you look back with some happy memories of that time. Also, <laughs> I assume you know I love you both and we love you very much too. Oh, so that's in reference to that photo that we posted, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, so what was that, like 16 years ago? Yeah, 16 or so, yeah. So what I was were you, 19 then? 19 and you were 29, 30? 30. 30. 30. Yeah, so we'd been together, we'd just really met or been together less than a year. Um, we were drinking a lot, we started taking a lot of drugs. I mean, I was ridiculously happy and in love when I met you, so I was happy, Same. you know, and so I'm glad that we met, but certainly it wasn't really meant to be at that time, you know? That lifestyle just did not do us a lot of good, did it? Who can have a healthy relationship, living that party lifestyle as well, the ups and downs, the highs and lows of drugs and, and yeah. things, you just can't maintain that. We, we were we were known as, <laughs> Posh and Bex oh, were popular at the time, we were known as the Posh and Bex of Prince of Wales Road, which was the sort of strip where all the nightclubs were, <laughs> and we were just known to be this fun party couple who, you know, everyone loved and whatever, and... Um, mm. You know, I wouldn't say everyone loved us necessarily. Well, a lot of people didn't like me very much when I used to beat them up. <laughs> I was a horrible doorman. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we um, we just had this crazy lifestyle, didn't we? It was real crazy, world win, you know, like romance and then crazy um, partying and outrageousness, basically. But I do have some fond memories, like for Hell sure. Yeah. And if we hadn't have met then, you know, we wouldn't be together now. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Yeah, it just was sort of doomed to failure, you know, just that extreme, like, it's just not helpful for, you know, in terms of physical health and, and mental health and, and, of course, relationships. Like, you can't sustain that. Yeah. Lyndon Watkinson says, I assume that a lot of people you used to be friends with around this the time of this photo was taken stopped inviting you out for parties, occasions, etc because they were jealous and maybe a little spiteful of your rapid self-improvement and changing <laughs> values. <laughs> How would you answer that? Hmm. Well, that photo that you're referring to, um, that we weren't vegan then, that was a, a very long time ago. So everyone did invite us to parties and occasions at that time because yeah. we were known to be, you know, into that and we would bring drugs along, you know, so... We, we did get invited to things. Um, there was about, so we were together two years, then we split up for four years. And I think just slowly over that time, we started to clean our acts up, I suppose. Yeah, yes. More and more each year kind of thing, you know, really. Getting a bit more health conscious and less wanting to be out. And, and for me, it, was, it wasn't anything uh, like sudden, like in terms of friends, just naturally your circle changes as your values change. Mm. You know, you're not drawn to be around people who are drunk when you're drunk or, or well, you know, vice versa, yeah. sorry. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it just naturally happened really gradually over time, I'd say sort of organically. Yeah, it wasn't like we said, oh, we're not, we can't go out with these people that drink anymore because we don't drink. Yeah, it was never like that. And when we went vegan, it wasn't like we said, oh, we're not going to hang around with people who eat animals anymore. That didn't happen either. But just slowly over time, our circle of friends has changed over many years, you know, just seems like a natural uh, process. It's just happened for us, really. Jexaphine Alois says, I assume Gemma went vegan first, then maybe asked you to watch your documentaries or something, just because I've heard how completely non-vegan your lifestyle used to be. That's fair. Uh, I can't <laughs> see you finding the alternative on your own, but God on you, if you did. I would say that we went whole foods plant-based before we went vegan, like we did it for health reasons, so you mm -hmm. certainly did, didn't you? Yeah, a few months before you, wasn't it? Maybe like six months before you, I yeah. went vegan. And then I saw the sort of health argument, and then so I went whole foods plant based for my health. And then it's actually me, I think. Uh, is this what sort of happened? It's hard to really remember now, isn't it? But I just remember seeing that um, cow on Gary Yurovsky's adapts.org site being um, herded into the kill, you know, the sort of to the kill floor being prodded. And I could see the fear on her face. She's drastically trying to, desperately trying to thrash and turn around, but she couldn't. She's in this narrow tall sort of corridor and, and I just saw the fear and I thought wow like I was complicit in that like they know that like, they don't they have the same emotions as us and she's terrified for her life and then my heart went out and there I think there and then I vowed to do all I could mm. you know to make a difference for the animals really stuck with you that moment didn't it oh that was horrible that mm. oh, I'll never forget that mm. so 
I, did, I kind of go more like vegan. I, I feel like it all just organically happened together yeah. at once, really. But I can't remember when it clicked for me, you know, the ethical side. I can't remember a specific time. Like we, just, can, you know. we just weren't privy to anyone talk. People say about pushy vegans. I wish I'd have met a pushy vegan like two years <laughs> Previously, you know, when I first went whole foods plant based, then yeah, you know, fluorescent, Flor- yeah, fluorescent, fluorescent, great name. Initially, I assumed you guys had always lived a vegan, less waste, minimalist lifestyle. No, <laughs> in short, no. Quite the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't used to care. I was, I was the sort of person I'd throw a litter out of my car when I was driving along. You know, like I didn't have. You had a car. Yeah, <laughs> I, I didn't have any, I don't know, I didn't care about anything outside of me. My world was so revolved around me and my perspective. And um, yeah, I can't really believe that I used to be that way now, obviously. But um, yeah, I just was. I was surrounded, I guess, by people who were the same. So it was okay that I was that way because everyone else in, in, you know, in life was just a small world, a small circle of compassion that just was about me, really. Um, yeah. Yeah, I didn't care about waste, like plastic or animals or, or or my fellow man, really, you know? Yeah, same, just totally self-absorbed and, um, yeah. I'm so grateful for veganism, it's, you know, it's changed my life, not just, you know, now I'm healthier, but I just view the world so differently and I have so much more compassion and for myself and everybody else, you know, yeah. in the planet. That's nice. Uh, Alina Balissi, I assume you love showing off that you're vegan and a tough guy at the same time, meaning that you go against the stereotype. <laughs> I sort of uh, feel a bit wounded sometimes when people refer to me in that way of being a tough guy because I don't, on the one hand, I don't want people to see me like that because I feel like I'm so kind and compassionate and I just want love in the world. Mm. But yeah, at the same time, I do like people to think, ah, oh, that he's like a alpha male or what you know for want of a better phrase however you want to quantify it but yeah i think that's good for veganism because um that's where we're kind of lacking at the minute it's mostly uh females that are vegan isn't it by a long shot so i think we need some uh more masculine kind of um role models i suppose yeah i think it's important like when you were first thinking about going whole food plant-based you were saying well, I'm seeing all these vegans online, but they're all slim and there's nothing wrong with being slim, but that's, I don't want to lose all my muscle. And that's not, you know, that's not the lifestyle for me. I'm not a runner or whatever, you know, I want to be this, you know, big guy. I'm a big, bad, mofo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, and so at the time, I mean, you didn't know about Patrick Baboumian and Emil Togado and all those people. Well, this is eight years ago now. Like, I don't, yeah. I don't even know if they were really, um, so for you, it was, it was very much like, oh, well, if I'm not seeing enough of these people, you know, like maybe I can be that example. And um, I think I felt like that really inspired you in the early days yeah. with the message. Yeah. yeah, it really did. Yeah, someone just sort of said to me, oh, for a vegan, like you, <laughs> yeah. you're huge. And I thought, wow, this could be my way of giving back. And, yeah. you know, I, I ate more animals than anyone I've ever met. Mm. I really did. And, um, you know, I thought if I can turn more people vegan, you know, and then they stop eating animals, if I can offset the amount of animals by, you know, the amount I save, that feel really good to me. Our IRL friend Reb, Reb Peb says, Rebel. I assume you will get a dog one day. I'd like to. Hmm. Yeah, I'd like to. Yeah, I would. Yeah, I think we will. I feel like uh, not right now because dogs deserve so much attention, you know, and time, like children, you know, I guess. So I feel like I want to build, um, a, a, you know, a big business that promotes veganism. I want that to be something that, you know, we build our business for maybe a few years. I want to do some traveling and I want to settle down somewhere warm someday. And I think when, you know, when maybe we found somewhere that we really want to live, Maybe I would Don't love time. love it if we adopt some dogs from like a shelter and we've got a load of land and they can live there and not be in a in a shelter. Yeah. That would make me feel amazing and I would you know, I'd love to have lots of animals around but uh, Sounds like a plan. Yeah. <laughs> 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 not right now. <laughs> <laughs> Cat face assumptions. Although you're uncomfortable about the idea of pets, you couldn't imagine life without furry companions. Oh, so that's carrying on. 
yeah so yeah I, I do feel a bit weird about the idea of pets mm. um, we really love the cat that we share our home with currently but yeah. I don't feel like I could get another cat I don't feel that like I could you know despite yeah. the amount of love I have like um, mm. I don't want to be um, funding a carnival and, and I mean we feed her the vegan cat food Benevo Complete and she's thriving on it However, as a nutritionist, you know, I, I recognise my hypocrisy and I advocate for a, a whole foods plant-based diet for humans, which I am convinced mm. is our species specific, you know, best fuel for disease prevention, treatment and even reversal uh, and no processed foods. And of course, this cat food is processed. So, you know, I recognise my hypocrisy. Um, yeah. It's a hard one. It's hard. You know, you're really damned if you do, you're damned if you don't in that situation. So maybe after cowboy's no longer with us we could live with a companion animal that's vegan like a rabbit or a, do a dog that can more easily be vegan but um i think uh, again it's like about um our plans you know if we're going to be yeah. traveling etc and also it's i don't know I, f I feel like if we're um having a companion animal that comes from like a rescue center that would have otherwise had a very small horrible like life that feels good to me but i just think um yeah, like we've said this a lot, the idea of pets, you know, they're they're sort of imprisoned in your home. You get to say when they go out and go for a wee or go for a walk and something about it that just doesn't really feel right, does it? doesn't feel <laughs> right, yeah. And, and I'm kind of past just doing things for my own pleasure and, and not thinking of others. Hmm. Uh, so when you when you really get the vegan thing, like you, it's like you have to apply this kind of logic to everything. I'm not saying that I'm perfect. I mean, certainly things like plastic consumption, I, I really need to to um, do more in, in that area. But um, yeah, you just get on this logical kind of uh, <laughs> pathway and it's just hard to do the wrong thing because you just- You overthink everything. <laughs> Uh, Car Supra, if you argue about something, it's in full sentences and usually ends in a good place. Uh, Is that true? Yeah, I'd say so. Oh, I don't. For one thing, I would say like we don't argue. What about this morning when you told me off about leaving the door open? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I don't. We don't really argue about things. I think if we had like a grievance, we would just say it, you know, and from yeah. a, a place of love, and we would receive it similarly. I um, read the book Nonviolent Communication a few years ago. Actually, I've read it like four times and it's the best book I've ever read. I can highly recommend it. And so for me, um, previous to reading that, I was the kind of person where I would not like to say if I was unhappy about something or if I had a preference. So I would hold that in and then I'd be resentful. And, and I just saw like, wow, this isn't helping me in relationships. And I've seen other people in my life behave in that same way and what happened to their relationships. I read that book and I thought, wow, I've really got to start learning to speak my truth, you know? And there's nothing wrong with saying, oh, you know, when you did that, I'd prefer it if you did it like that. Like, that's fine. But I used to feel like it wasn't okay to say things, you know? So I think that's key, isn't it, in relationships? You've got to be that's able to great. say, you're about to just say in the moment, oh, you know, that didn't feel good to me or I, whatever. I'll tell you, you know? the one time where you employed that really good. Okay. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I was even more um, of a workaholic than I am now in terms of this, you know, social media stuff. Uh, and so Jim had read the book uh, and instead of saying to me, are oh, you on that bloody phone all the time? You never give me any time where I can just take offence. I think, no, I'm not. And I get I angry. You defend yourself. Yeah. So yeah. Gemma put it in the non-violent way. <laughs> how, how did you say it exactly? Oh, I can't remember now. So I, what are the three? Feelings neat. Observation, feeling, need, request. So, uh, so when I That's observe right. you on your phone until whatever time at night. So you I, actually say the time, you're not being ambiguous or saying always. always. Yeah, yeah. Um, I feel, so next is feelings, I feel lonely because I'm needing to connect with you. Um, feeling, observation, feelings, yeah, needs, so I need to connect with yeah. you. Yeah, request, uh, can you, can you my, finish by 8 pm yeah. and we'll have a couple of hours yeah. together? Well, and, <laughs> and it's so frustrating because you can't argue with it. <laughs> You can't look at oh, you're like, fair enough. <laughs> so that was that. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I think, uh, I don't know, we're so lucky. We're so in love, aren't we? And, and we really yeah. think about each other and we've learned how to communicate and we've learned to be able to speak up and... And I tell you, my counselling course gave me so many skills for communicating and personal counselling, not on my, you know, not through my course. So 
that those things have helped me because I've had some healing to do on a mental emotional level and that stuff can affect relationships so I think that the more we heal things individually that helps in our relationship um yeah and we just know like if you say something in the moment it's much less of a big deal than if you hang on to it oh that you things know. build up and then resentments and yeah yes have we done it we said is it me? We know this lady in real life. Uh, honestly, Rosa says she assumes that we give good hugs. Great hugs, she said. Oh, yeah. Well, I've hugs. got to think we met you at least a couple of times. I'm sure we must have given you a hug. So <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking you're cheating now. I'm thinking you're cheating. <laughs> Pre COVID days. Yeah. You got a hug from us. <laughs> you are yeah. a good hugger. You're very warm and you like meeting people and finding out about them and hugging them. That's like your favourite thing when you go to these festivals. I'm yeah. a bit more introverted, a bit more shy. Like, I'll say hello a bit and then I like to go off and look at some stalls, you know. And like, but when you hug your friends, uh, yeah. you're a great hugger. <laughs> yeah, you're not, you're not so like shy. You like giving a lot of hugs, don't you? Yes. Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Melissa Laura uh, assumes that we are good people. Oh, that's nice. Good people. I like to think that we are. Um, I feel like we try our best. Like, of course, I make these um, reaction videos to, to ex or non vegan or anti vegan, sorry, and carnivore eaters. And I don't want to make these videos one little bit. Mm -hmm. You might think that's bonkers and you might think I'm lying, but I really don't. I just want to give out love. But animals are dying unnecessarily. The planet's dying yeah. people are dying and, and someone needs to point out this stuff and there needs to be social consequences yeah. to people's actions and i've always been you know back when i was a doorman or whatever or in relationships i've always felt the need to, to protect others and that's, that's just in my dna so mm. but other than that mm. I, I mean, good. obviously, we all we're the heroes of our own stories all the time, so we always think that we're the right. And of course, these kind of worries are going to see it the opposite way round. Yeah, they're the good yeah. person and whatever. Um, but yeah, certainly back when I was a doorman, um, I, I was a nasty. Yeah, you know, I was good to the people that were close to me, I suppose, um, for the most part. Um, I was a bit of really. I was a bit of. And I, and I saw how kind Gemma was to everyone and I thought I'd like to be a bit more like her, please. <laughs> Splosh Josh says uh, he assumes that I secretly love being pegged, whatever that means. Uh, no, um, I actually prefer a finger and it's not even a secret. <laughs> you, yours uh, is the last one. <laughs> uh, I didn't even know what that word meant. I had to ask uh, for the... Uh, we had to ask an adult. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, legal hippie official assumes that Hinch is pretty dominant only in the ways I want him to be <laughs> <laughs> I mean does that mean in the boudoir I have no idea um, in which case uh, if we're being honest um, yeah <laughs> <laughs> um, um, which is how you like it isn't it <laughs> that's too much information I enter please <laughs> I'm a dominant and generous lover. I'm getting all embarrassed now. Look what you've done, legal hippie. You've embarrassed me. Um, well, and then in terms of social situations, like, um, I guess you would have said that years ago when I was being a doorman and whatever, but I think now, like, um, yeah, I like a bit of limelight, but I don't want to... Um, You're quite laid back, I think. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Hmm. Now click... Oh, this? I did it bad. 